bonjour indeed and a very warm welcome to you guys thanks for tuning in uh, once again um, we have got uh, some fun in store for you today we've come along to as you can probably see behind you or behind us I should say um, a Genoa dealer we're down just near Le Lavendou in uh, just on the Mediterranean in southern France and uh, they have very kindly agreed uh, for us to pop in have a look at some of the new boats they've got um, give you a walkthrough or two um, so we'll probably split the uh, films up so that um, uh, we can get some detail into each one so if you're watching this one go search for the others as well and um, I'm sure we'll bring you a bit of detail and a really nice insight into some of the 2022 and 2023 range um, that we've been able to see here so come along and enjoy our walkthroughs yes I'm looking forward to this absolutely so Espace Power is the name of the dealership here Celia who works here um, was extremely kind in letting us uh, come and have a closer look at the uh, at some of the uh, vessels here the boats here uh, they supply brand new boats uh, and used um, have a good supply in their window I think don't they Resi? Absolutely, yes. a good supply of uh, both used and new brand new boats some of which are in stock and obviously some which you're, uh, you are able to order the order from them and um, set to your own specification. So during the films that we're going to show you um, of some of the individual boats, um, I will put up on screen some of the um, specifications uh, and some of the detail of the boats themselves. Um, but obviously, if you want to know more about them, um, either come here to this fabulous part of southern France, um, where it's, gosh, about 31 today, uh, or, of course, to your local uh, Juno dealer uh, who will be able to assist. Yeah, so, um, and then inside the dealership, Espas Power, um, a really nice, really nice uh, retail area with just about anything you could possi really possibly want. A good chandlery. Oh, this yes. Is so nice. Isn't it just? Is so nice. It's nicely Absolutely. laid out, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, lovely indeed. Let's just show. Uh, let's show you guys a quick circuit round. See everything they've got here. Absolutely lovely. I think, like everywhere in the uh, in Europe, let alone the UK, um, they're uh, they're struggling to get not only boats uh, here to the dealership, but also parts and bits of boats and. You well, name it. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are nice, aren't they? Yes. You can even buy your paddle boards here. Cool, yeah. And your what do they call those? Wakeboards. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so and of course, yeah. if you're gonna tow, then here it is too. Get your tow board here as well, wow. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, a lot of space nice here. Showroom. Very nicely set out. Anyway, so, and uh, here on the inside of the uh, showroom, they've got a number of the um, boats set out here for you uh, to have a look round. So the first one we're going to uh, going to show you round is the uh, from the Cap Camara range, or Cap Camarat range, if you're from the UK perhaps. Uh, this is the 6.5. WA, which um, if you weren't sure, stands for walk around. Um, they also do, of course, the CC, which is the center console that stands for. So, but this one is the 6.5 walk around. It's the series three, which means that it's uh, the latest model. And that just gives you a look at the, uh, some of the outside detail of the boat here so all these are your uh, they mark for your lifting points for the uh, hoist uh, front and rear there's your secondary lifting point there a 
uh, and you can see before we actually get on the boat here a very similar if you've watched some of our other films you'll uh, recognize straight away some of the Genoa features um, that come across the whole range from Mary Fisher to Cap Camerat that this obviously just lifts up here and then the velcro strap is undone this extends out and then uh, it just drops down into the water to give you that uh, really useful access I, if you've I been off these, the back i find those uh, very easy to use once it's in the water it's yes. quite comfortable and they extend enough for you to comfortably hang get, on to the bar yes and yeah coming up out of the water so absolutely yeah, and get your feet good. on yes yeah. yeah this one prepped and ready for its uh, Mercury engine. They're Mercury dealers here, so all of the boats um, here um, at, the, at the dealership are fitted with uh, various sizes of Mercury engine. Um, obviously, if you're in the UK or watching this from the UK, then um, the, depending on the dealership you use, uh, it may be Honda or it may be Yamaha engines uh, or similar. Uh, this one's obviously powered by a single, a single engine. So here's the uh, engine bay on this particular 6.5 then they'd be looking to put a 150 mercury on this uh, and you can see here you've got your uh, um, cables there for your steering the steering arm itself ready for fitting once the engine arrives and then these um, these big black cables which are common to a lot of Genos are um, uh, enable the cabling to be routed uh, from as it comes out from the rear of the engine there it enables the cabling, be it um, for your steering or, or other controls that you may be using on the boat itself as options, um, to be piped and channeled out to the exterior of the boat. It gives uh, some good protection as well. It's really solid plastic, that. Um, but you'll see here, uh, this one is generally by a port side entrance, of course by the swim ladder that we've just talked about. Um, together with that bar that just allows you and helps to get uh, helps to get you in and out of the, of the vessel you'll see as well over here as your uh, fuel cap um, this sort of star shape is a typical um, uh, way to open a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, access points on the boat uh, just one large key and in fact if you're going to get one, buy a spare just in case, or we'll tie a large bit of cork to it, just in case you drop it in the water. We never managed to do that, but there's always a first. Um, looking up over the top here, yeah, you've got a really useful bar here. When, when we had the 795 and the 895, we had a towable, and um, the one thing which we missed on the 7 and the 8 was the ability to secure the towable to the boat itself um, it meant that on our seven we had um, just down at the base of the boat we had a couple of d-rings under there which we used for sort of bridle for for our job towable but this one of course gives you this really good stainless steel bar over the top here and eye here for your uh, for your skiing rope uh, or towable or similar and of course really well secured into the uh, into the two decks each side so that's a really nice setup like that and then just down here, you can see a little bit of storage there. Um, good external storage, got a vent there for uh, water uh, to escape, should, uh, should you take any water on over the top there. And then here as well, you've got your, um, you've got your external uh, shower, so this just uh, pulls out from here. You get a really good run of cable, so if you're coming up, up your uh, swim ladder, onto the deck here, it just gives you an opportunity to uh, have a good old sluice off, get rid of all the salt water before you uh, before you get back on board. And then it, they're always a little bit fiddly to get back in these, so you just have to just light it back in there like that. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look on board, show you some of the features that it's got here. And you can see straight away they've set out really nicely there and uh, some uh, glasses here or plastic I should say uh, for which they provide these recessed cup holders in there for different size cups this um, again was very like our 795 and 895 in that these uh, tubes can come uh, or lift out of the uh, of the hole in the center there which allows you then to stow the uh, table completely in some of the storage that they provide it also allows you of course you'll see here that 
there is a second piece here which uh, just lifts up like that and, and you can hear it there just locking in position by those catches under there which so it keeps its cushion on which is a good thing so you don't have to stow it somewhere um, and it just lifts up clicks into place and you can then make the whole rear if you like into a, a large sun sunbed by then closing off this which is uh, you can see here that's just a lift and a turn and then and then this bit similarly comes down from the side here you've got the options here of then um, the infill cushion at the back here so um, you know a really a really good sized area if I just pan back a little bit there and you can get a flavor of the size of that uh, of the deck when it's got its seats in the up position you'll see this one as well which was down when we jumped in but you can see there the mechanism which allows the whole seat to fold up as well so you actually can then create a really good amount Nicky's just putting that one up over there and you can see how easy they are just to lift up um, and uh, fold back which then allows you to create that uh, quite a big rear cockpit space here um, if you're not uh, already in the driver's seat. Uh, Celia was telling us here that again one of the uh, parts that they're waiting for are the two bolster seats that would normally sit on these two frames uh, but what the advantage of in fact they're not being in position is that I can show you here they've got um, adjustability here so um, so you can by loosening these off you can then uh, get the stem of the seat to uh, lift up which means that uh, you can get it absolutely perfectly positioned for yourself at the helm here um, and the bolster system itself which um, you can look at certainly on our 895 offshore that had a bolster seat and I'm sure as we work through today some of the other boats will uh, we'll get to be able to show you the detail of the actual seat when it's in position as well so just to show you also the underside of this extendable seat it's got obviously a central pole here which drops down to provide that little bit of extra support when you've got it in sunbed mode and then here you can just see a little clip here um, which uh, with Nikki over the other side there we can just clip that just merely lift it and down it goes back into uh, the folded up position so I like that that's uh, that's really easy to um, to utilize then uh, under here you've got your uh, these are just your fixing straps where where these work through and then velcro back on themselves to keep your cushions in place when you're underway it's, it's a nice open feel yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, you, you get this. a feel yeah. of spaciousness. Oh, um, yes. It's, it's all over and it's just lovely. Yeah, it Imagine is. Imagine sitting here on a lovely sunny day. Oh, definitely. And uh, off you go. Definitely. Um, outdoor speakers of course you'll have probably just seen there um, so we've got the uh, got the fusion radio system the outdoor speakers uh, these will be vents for the underside of the uh, off the interior of the boat and then you've got some more storage here these are uh, catches that you just uh, lift up and turn slightly to allow them to open and then you can just open that up and there you can see that's quite good storage in there blue there that you can see is water piping which will be going to that rear shower that i showed you but you can see that's a good size storage in there um for all of your bits and bobs be it life jackets or whatever what you can also see on the underside here near the um those are the plastic grips that then if you take the table legs off or the table upright off that stows under here uh, together with of course that oval shaped top would fit in here as well and you've probably just spotted as well this piece here it's uh, concertinas in the middle back here but then if you look carefully there you'll just see there's, a, there's actually a light on the end of it and that piece um, when required is if for example you were motoring at night um, it would give you the opportunity to then take it out you lift this cover up here and down at the bottom there which you probably can't see but some plug terminals um, so that uh, that then allows you to pop that in at the rear there gives a bit of visibility for other craft so you can be seen if you're 
if you're uh, underway at night and uh, and it obviously comes up comes up here above the uh, give you plenty of height so you can be seen um, these obviously are your rod holders they were very similar to ones we had both on the 795 and our 895 just a slight angle there so your rods are angled backwards um, one over there next to Nikki um, and also next to Nikki as well is the uh, this will be the freshwater intake just tell that by the blue line around the uh, base of the uh, filler there just to give you a clue that it's uh, the freshwater tank which we'll see where that heads for in a moment up at the helm here again some uh, controls that are similar across the whole Genoa range um, you've got an ability here for a um, cigarette lighter style socket there uh, we had uh, what we used ours for a lot on our 7.9 and 8.95s were um, inflating our inflatable kayak we also used it for the towable um, and for our little dinghy that we had on the 8.95 which we used to use a little torpedo electric motor on um, which was really useful so 12 volt socket really useful for all those sorts of things um, and then your switching systems here those are obviously the one here would be for your bilge fresh water pump so that just allows the water to get to the shower and the, uh, these will be your, li your lighting uh, two lighting switches there um, some nice drinks holders there sort of chrome lined with a, with a softish base and a drain plug at the bottom just in case you get any spillage um, and these are fitted as standard with Garmin um, Echo Map 72s um, the screen size if it's um, and I'm sure it is very similar to our 7 and 8 you had um, a complete choice as to how big a screen you wanted um, obviously it's got to be able to physically fit into the surround but but there's always an option when you're buying these uh, vessels to um, to get in to, and to change the specification of the electronics to your preferred option um, there's your mercury rev counter um, got a troll mode there for the engine if you were fishing for example troll mode being a, a really slow tick over but just perhaps moves you one or two miles an hour or indeed in fact if you were pointing say into a tide it might actually just help to keep you in one position if you, if you particularly wanted to do that fuel gauge just below it um, there's your mercury controls uh, it's a nice uh, a very nice, uh, from an ergonomic point of view, a very nice control. It's got on the top here the up and down for your engine lift. Um, and obviously these are your um, cutouts for the engine and your start stop for the engine itself. But um, a lot of them now, our 895 certainly was fly-by-wire, so it was actually an electronic throttle control. Not, um, even though it feels as though it might be driven by cables. It's merely electronics, any electronic signals to the uh, to the throttle mechanisms that uh, that speed you up, slow you down, or put you into reverse. So as Nikki just moves the steering as well, you can see there you've got the uh, you've got the steering mechanism moving there, which would be attached to your Mercury engine, your Mercury 150 for this particular boat, and um, that gives you manoeuvrability of the engines because they are big and heavy things. We'll have a quick look up the side here. This is, um, I like this bit here because it's got quite a deep recess there, which means that um, for an adult height, or particularly perhaps for kids who are coming up the side here towards the front of the boat, then these rails offer uh, good support and good height as you step up and start to walk up the side here. And the other, the other side is, um, passable, you can walk along there, but it's uh, yeah. obviously there's no deep recess, um, it's just for access, really. Yes, yeah, but, uh, absolutely, but, but it's it is not doable. as deep. It is yeah. doable. You've got the bars here, so yes. it's fine. Yeah, yes, that rail going up, you know, around the top here is quite useful, isn't it, for, uh, for yeah. support as you're climbing up. But this side certainly would perhaps be a general access, a little bit wider, a lot deeper, and just allows you then, you know, to use either this bar or this one on this side to then come up onto here, onto what is a lovely sized sun pad, isn't it? It is, yeah. In fact, it's very nice. lie down on that and let me just, uh, let, let's um, just see what it's like yeah. size-wise. Yeah, because you are five foot seven. 
Yeah, I can do quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. Lay down on that. So that's a good, a good five foot seven, and indeed, if you were yes, to be either side or diagonally, even, even more. In fact, yes, I guess you could. Would you go crossways across that? You go any way you want to. Yeah, I mean, I would. Is it? Is I it five foot seven worth? Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 So uh, pretty good dimensions that sun deck. Um, and oh yes, very nice too. Yeah, like that. A little bit of lighting through the hatch there that goes down into the interior of the boat, which we'll show you in a moment. Are we talking of lighting? You've got your navigation lights here. Yeah. Two sides. Port and starboard, which would be one of the switches that we showed you there on the dash. You got two feet at the front. Yeah. Yes. They've also got, and the other, the other cleat points are at the rear there, um, which is more than enough for a boat of this size. And then under this, under these cushions, which hinge back easily on fabric, um, is, the, uh, is your locker here. So really good size lockers on these, they're huge. Um, so you can see there a good space to um, fit perhaps fenders for the front end of the boat here. It's a Lumar um, electric windlass, so you can see under here, um, there's your motor mechanism. Um, it's got a standard sort of Lumar fit here with this, is, uh, this top bit here is just for if you had to use it in manual mode. Um, and incidentally, if you want to actually see a lot more detail about these Lumar anchors, then on our channel we've got a film uh, which is all about um, how to safely anchor your boat. So do have a look at that and you'll see a lot more of the, uh, of the workings of the, um, of the anchor. This obviously would be your um, small clip here which uh, attaches to your anchor chain which once your anchor's brought up, you fit the clip to it just as a, a way to ensure that the anchor doesn't by accident drop back into the sea. That would be ready for your remote control for your anchor. And again, as I say, if you want to see a little bit more detail about that and how to, how to safely use your anchor, then do, uh, do check out our other film on our channel. And you see these tiny little poppers here. Those are um, those match with these, so that if you wanted it to be, you know, nice and secure, then you would just engage those poppers you just heard and clip into place there. Under the cushions here, you can see. I'll just show you briefly there. This mechanism here, this sort of tubular strip here, that fits, slides into that channel. So you sort of start back here, slide the cushion along, having lined it up with your with your circular piece here, and that's what. That's what locks the cushion into place and stops it. Uh, you know, if you're underway doing 30 odd plus knots, then it would stop the cushions uh, disappearing up in the air and off the back of the boat, which, which, well, it would be an interesting retrieve, but, um, but it certainly would help to stop that. And then when Nikki just lifting up that whole cushion itself, it just gives you a chance to see, again, those channels there. Again, the uh, little poppers here that you cushions, but in effect, what's underneath. If, say, you were wintering your boat, um, or it's in storage for a while, you might want to take these cushions off. Um, and it's just then the GRP surface of the boat that's, um, that's underneath. All right, so let's head back down this, uh, this side piece. And let's show you a bit about a bit of what's inside. Sliding door here, lockable door, um, clips in there and then slides along there and behind the uh, helm station. So we're down inside we are this 6.5 WA and let's show you a couple of the bits of the inside. So you've got a hatch here with just a, a swing clip that obviously gives you access to the underside of the helm station that we've just been talking about. Um, there's all your electrics that they've uh, that come through the back there, um, and your um, your steering. That's your steering column there, and the uh, the cables coming down there for the steering itself. Here's your other switching systems and the electrics. So as I was saying, you can see that this is obviously GRP. So um, there would be an ability. Um, potentially to have a larger screen at the front there if you wanted something slightly bigger um, and that's obviously a case of talking to your dealer and uh, seeing what those options are specific to whereabouts you are because um, I'm sure UK and France would probably differ. You'll see here that switch in there that's um, to do with the NMEA 2000 system 
which is a way of linking electronic devices to each other. So your chart plotter that we saw there up at the top, the Garmin, uh, can be electronically linked. So for example, you can get your uh, engine displays to come up uh, with NMEA cabling between the rev counter and the Garmin itself. So you can display various other things. And in fact, one thing that's also behind me here in the cabin is your fusion radio as well. This one is the RA70. Um, which was exactly the same ones as we had both in the 795 and the 895. Um, but you can also, with that NMEA cabling, you can also project, um, you know, a top or a bottom bar on your Garmin chart plotter, which shows you and gives you controllability of the uh, radio itself. Albeit ours did have, as well as that ability, it had a remote control as well. Um, and that just up there, that's your radio cover, which just pops over there. Um, while we're over the back here you can see you've got these little toggle lights which i don't think will be working though because we're obviously not powered up at the moment um, but you can just get an idea in there you can just see in there you've got um switching in there usb behind that black switch there you've got a little lip here um which uh, which would allow for some uh, limited storage at the side of the boat here um, these bits here are just sort of cable runs and the like um, and our hatches which are used in a lot of uh, Juno boats they just simply unscrew and give uh, and their access points for be it for cabling uh, be it for water cables you name it they route them through these things um, and the door if Nikki just pushes the door uh, open there you'll see that uh, it just slides past there uh, past just behind all the switches there and then we can close that up again there and there's a nice little mm -hmm. clip here that you can just simply yeah. put down to stop the door yeah um, if you're underway if then you're underway moving yeah. absolutely yeah um so let's have a look at the rest of this uh, cabin area itself there um nikki's just shown you there the window um a really good seal around it for obvious reasons and then now the piece that you're seeing there uh, and the cushion you're seeing there is actually where where our legs are at the moment so you can see these little grooves here they uh, that's where that last piece sits so let's just try and get that in place for you so you can get a feel of uh, of what the final uh, fully cushioned area looks like so there it is with the piece of wood in place um, if you're intending on getting one of these vessels then that end is slightly wider than this end so uh, make sure you get it the right way around and then finally similarly with a cushion of course one end slightly bigger and that then just slides in there on the top and gives you what is a pretty lengthy area there isn't it i mean that's mm. if you oh, yeah. put your if you lay down with head to that end you by that easily, mirror end easy get, get two people in here yeah, comfortable. yeah. put your head up near the mirror that's it. Well, no, that will probably. Yeah, you're probably right. Actually, you'd want to be a bit further down, wouldn't you? So that you could, uh, so that yeah, you could yeah. could easily make it a double, couldn't it? Yeah, if you but want. if you get an idea, as I say, Nikki's five foot seven, um, and it gives you an idea then that it would be very easy to fit um, two adults. A really good size. I mean, look at the the distance here. There's probably another two foot there at least in terms of space there i'll just spread if... out just to demonstrate <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> doing the uh, snow queen um, bit the uh the space here therefore um if we add that to nikki's size five seven so you've got about seven and a half perhaps even slightly more seven and a half foot length of cushioned area um, which you could make into a berth um for overnighting if you wanted to headspace obviously well as you can see it's it is slightly limited but then again with a, a vessel like this you wouldn't be um, expecting to have absolutely masses in this here where it just drops down here um so i guess it's probably um round about 600 mil i should think clearance from the cushions um, and nikki's just showing you what else is there so we've got there just some additional storage um which we can get to down there. There's your wooden partition there. And another good storage place. Uh, you can see as well, you've got the, um, got the bilge. Uh, the bilge releases down there. Should you get water into the boat at all, then it always makes its way. They're designed very well, as you know, um, that it always takes the water all the way to the back of the boat and then out, uh, if you shipped any water during your travels. Um, 
mirror at the back there fitted again shelving over the other side a bit like this side a little bit of limited shelving and Nick is just there taking that piece out again which gives you that uh, which gives you that little bit of foot space down uh, down in the well there so with that piece out of the way you can obviously see that there's then more cushions that you can take out there's another wooden piece there so in effect you've now got a really good uh, a really good area uh, seating area it could well be a storage area you might put your fishing equipment down here uh, whatever it may be and then down in these bits these side bits here looks like there's some other little cubby holes there yeah they don't go back very far but um they're probably see how far that goes yeah that's just like a that's just a sort of simple little square cubby hole storage um for your bits and pieces so i suppose the bit um we're at here if i just now move from where i'm sat and i can show you there that You've got yet more bits and pieces you can get in there. And another one there. And, so, the, other, and the other side. Yeah. Right. Let's just move that piece of wood. And let's see if they've got similar. Yeah, they've got similar storage here. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's just the same yeah. as the other side. So, I mean, for a small craft like this, um, loads of storage for your bits mm. and pieces. Um, certainly a really good size in fact when i think back to our 795 mm -hmm. um it provides more bed space than the 795 did the mary fisher 795 so this is actually quite a generous cabin space uh once you've got uh, all those cushions in place really nice too and then finally just before we head back out again um there's the second hatch and there you can see your uh you know the back of the garment that I was talking about earlier you can see straight away there that there's room around there where you probably could certainly plumb in a bigger screen if you wanted it to um, but you can see it's relatively straightforward for the fitters to work with in that it's just a case of cutting out a slightly bigger notch um, if you wanted to uprate or upgrade I should say your uh, Garmin system so that's uh, and pretty easy to be fair to uh, get in and out of um, get in and out of these and to actually do the work on them so it's not not uh, you don't have to be a contortionist to get in and out okay let's go back out so um slidey door there it's obviously smoke glass as you've seen there privacy glass and this piece here this piece just here would be in effect uh, it allows you to take that out of the way because that then becomes your step in and out um so that you don't get muddy feet on your cushions or damp feet on your cushions so they've even thought of those little bits which is quite a nice little touch um with your um with your new boat certainly you would get an absolute mountain of manuals this obviously is for that garmin 72 cv that i mentioned um the echo map um if you look at some of our other films, certainly for the 795, for the 895, you'll see other um, variations of Garmin systems on those films. Um, and Geno, you know, for both of our new boats, and clearly for this one, supply you with um, a little uh, sort of satchel, little case, um, and it's got in there um, all of your documentation. Um, it's got a standard Genoa type well geno type welcome box and uh, i should think there's probably tools and a few little spares in here if mine was anything to go by yeah got the uh, little bit of deck soap got a few little clips there a bit of um, insulating type tape bit of chrome cleaner um, obviously uh, maintenance uh, information and advice um, our 895 had a little toolkit with it and some other bits and pieces so i wouldn't be surprised if that's in here somewhere um, so there's all the manuals i talked about um, you'll have your spare keys and uh, other bits and pieces so a right little uh, treasure box that they supply you with uh, when you when you're lucky enough to collect your new boat okay guys so 
let me get my steps sorted and let's get back out here and join Nikki out on the back out on the back deck well yeah I think it's a fabulous little thing isn't it yeah I think it's fantastic well not so little of course no. anything with a 150 horse mercury on the back oh. is going to probably do uh, 30 plus knots if I can get the data on that I'll put it up on screen as well give you an idea of speed and that sort of thing um, but yeah really nicely put together some very typical Genoa touches weren't there you recognize a lot of those yes, from our yes. 795 yeah. and the 895 yeah, yeah. everything's very well thought out that's yeah what I yeah and it's every sort of last little nook and cranny they've made into some sort of storage or you know some sort of uh, way that the seats fold up and down I must say from our original 795 uh, where you had to take cushions off and remove other bits of the boat to uh, to, to set up the sun power. That's a lot easier just to have something that folds up and down, isn't it? Yes. So yeah, absolutely. like that. That's a good uh, a good little feature. That mm -hmm. down the bottom, incidentally, if you're wondering, next to my uh, pair of sunnies, um, this uh, this bit here is actually a manual bilge pump. Again, on all of the Genos that we've had and this one as well um, and you merely take the handle out put it in there and then you can manually pump out water if for any reason your um, electronic bilge at the front here fails um, so a manual bilge and so we saw the two cleats at the front of the boat yeah. and the rear cleats are actually on this slanted piece here that's one yeah. there and then there's one on the other side as well. Yeah, over by the fuel uh, fuel inlet and there. And they're very sturdy. They are. Yeah, absolutely. Feet on these. Yeah, really well bolted through the GRP hull, um, and certainly uh, more than enough to uh, keep you steady when you're moored. There are, um, of course, as with any Genoa, there are an awful lot of options um, in terms of not just your engine size, but and not just your uh, electrical equipment but then uh, I believe even for the 6.5 and again I'll put it up on the screen if it's the case I think there may also be an option to have a small um, day head put in here you obviously sacrifice some of the uh, corner here uh, on this one I think you've got an option perhaps to use some of that space in there which I have to say is very generous some of that space for um, for a day head addition as one of the many options that you can add to uh, to most Genoa boats. Yeah, very nice too, isn't it? Yes, very like nice. Like that one? Yes. Very nice. And let's just give you one last look at it from the outside. There you see, cap camera at 6.5 WA walk around. Really nice boat, that. Okay guys, hopefully that's, um, if you were thinking of the uh, cat camera at range, then that's giving you a good insight into the 6.5. Um, keep an eye on our channel because um, uh, with any luck, we're gonna have a, also have a look at the Series 3 7.5, uh, which they have here at the dealership. Um, and you'll be able to have a comparison, as we will, of, uh, of those two boats side by side. So, um, have a look at our list of films and hopefully you're gonna find the 7.5 on there as well. See you very soon, awesome. bye now. Stay tuned. Thank you.